how to analyze this timing paths in the digital logic circuits and how to improve the timing in this digital logic circuit so that's why i'm asking whether you are familiar with this uh, uh, particular subject yeah so let us start the session i think i hope my screen is visible right can anyone confirm yeah i hope my screen is visible yeah so all the recordings will be uploaded in this youtube channel all about vlsi so you can watch those recordings in case if you miss a live session so coming to the uh, we will start with the basic definition of hta so the full form of hta is static timing analysis so what is the static timing analysis the static timing analysis is a method used to evaluate the timing of a digital circuit without requiring the simulation so static timing analysis hta is a method used to evaluate the timing of a digital circuit without uh, requiring the simulation so let's see with an example here so let us say if we have a uh, design okay so let's say this is our some a particular design okay which is uh, designed using some combinational circuits as well as some uh, sequential circuits right so we don't know uh, what type of circuit is uh, it is what type of connections we have inside it uh, let's say it is a black box okay it is a black box and inside we don't know what type of uh, circuits uh, have been used and what type of uh, combinational circuits they have used we don't know okay so this type of uh, this design wait a minute yes. uh, please mute your mic so basically this type of design uh, we will get uh, some particular output right so from let's say here the dst plus so we will get some particular output from this design right so this is our black box and uh, it may be made up of any combinational circuits and sequential circuits and from this uh, we, we are getting some particular output and let's say we are giving some particular input to this black box okay this may be any design so uh, let's say uh, we have to get the output at uh, 5 nanoseconds time period okay so generally we will uh, in digital circuits we will get the uh, outputs and uh, we deal with nanosecond time period only okay nanoseconds and picoseconds okay so in that time period we should get a particular output so what if the output is not getting at 5 nanoseconds it is getting at 10 nanoseconds or it is getting more delayed like it is getting more delayed to 20 nanoseconds or it, it is going up to 30 nanoseconds so what happens is so this is our black box this is our black box here we should get the output at 5 nanoseconds and another black box which is dependent upon this first black box so it may be any circuit okay so it is dependent upon this first black box okay so we should get the output at 5 nanoseconds so this the uh, output of this first black box will be processed by the second black box okay so the, it will be processed by the bb1 black box 1 and it will yeah yeah uh, it will be uploaded in the youtube i will provide the link okay yeah so this bb2 will process the output which is given by this bb1 so let's say this will uh, this should produce the output at uh, 2 nanoseconds time period only so within 2 nanoseconds it should provide so after how many nanoseconds total we are getting the output from this bb2 so we are getting at 7 nanoseconds so the output will be generated at 7 nanoseconds from black box 2 okay but what happens if black box 1 is uh, taking more time to generate the output let's say it is taking 2 more nanoseconds extra that is it is instead of generating the output at 5 nanoseconds it is generating the output at 7 nanoseconds then what happens here the output from bb2 also get delayed that is it will go to 7 to 9 nanoseconds okay so like this the delay increases okay so basically this type of delay will be introduced so why it is introduced because uh, because of the uh, 
devices we are using like mosfet or um cmos cmos technology we, we uh, there will be some type of delay introduced or the uh, type of path we are using for data flow uh, the type of uh, path we are designing for the data flow like that uh, we will see in our future sessions why we are getting this type of delays in this uh, uh, circuits so we will see and how to encounter those delays and how to manage the timing of this okay so uh, this is what hta deals with so hta will basically analyze uh, in which path we are getting the delay and how to encounter that particular path and how how to decrease that particular time delay okay is it clear is the motive of this hta is clear Yes, sir. So we can analyze this uh, timing delays with the help of HTA, and there is one more uh, technique called dynamic timing analysis. So there are two types of timing analysis techniques. One is called static timing analysis, and another is called dynamic timing analysis. We will see the difference in few minutes. So before that, we will come back to this definition of HTA. So I hope. Uh, the example uh, given you a better idea about what is HTA and why we are going to use HTA. So, static timing analysis is a method used to evaluate the timing of the digital circuit without requiring the simulation. Okay, it checks whether the circuit meets the required timing constraints, ensuring that the data is processed correctly and within the clock cycle. So, unlike dynamic timing analysis, which relies on the simulating the circuit. With the input vectors, HTA examines all the possible paths in the design to ensure that circuit will function correctly under worst case condition. So this is a very very important point. Worst case condition. This we will uh, we are going to discuss in our future video part. And now we will discuss what is this dynamic timing analysis and HTA static timing analysis. With the difference, we will go. We are going to discuss. So what uh, in case of HTA that is static timing analysis. so both static timing analysis and dynamic timing analysis are used to basically analyze the timing timing path whether we are getting the output at correct time or the circuit is behaving according to the timing specifications which is given to it or not so both the methods are used to analyze the timing but what is the difference here we will see okay so coming to method to analyze the timing without simulation using mathematical models so hta uses mathematical models to analyze the simulation so sorry to analyze the uh, timing behavior without using the simulation whereas dynamic timing analysis relies on the simulation simulating the circuit with specific input vectors for example i hope uh, you are all are familiar with uh, uh, verilog coding right so in verilog coding uh, when we use the tools like model sim or some tools like vivado we have a option called simulation okay so what we will do in that so after writing our uh, verilog code for the design what we will do is we will write the test bench for this design okay we will write the test bench for this design what we are going to do in this test bench we will write the input vectors okay we will write the input vectors for this design and we will test what is the what are all the possible outputs we are getting for this particular input vectors we are going to uh, check for this design and using the waveform uh, i hope you are all familiar with the waveform in vivado or model sim so using the waveform we are going to analyze whether we are getting the output at expected time or not so like that we are going to check the uh, timing of the circuit so this is this particular checking is called dynamic timing analysis okay so dta relies on simulating the circuit with specific vectors okay next coming to input vectors hta does not require input vectors at all so uh, it it but it covers all the possible paths so what is this path we are going to discuss in our upcoming session so for now remember that hta does not need any uh, input vectors but whereas in dynamic timing analysis requires input vectors for simulation only for sim only, only the simulated paths are analyzed okay and coming to the comprehensiveness examines all the possible paths in the design including the worst case scenarios so in case of hta 
it will it will analyze all the parts in the design okay so don't worry about this terminology parts and all we will discuss in our future sessions what are all these parts what are uh, what are all the critical parts worst case scenarios all this okay so for now uh, remember the uh, definition or the terms which i have written here okay and in case of dynamic timing analysis limited to the parts and scenarios covered in the input vectors so this is a basic difference between the ht and dta okay coming to the speed faster analysis as it does not retain, uh, rely on the simulations whereas uh, in case of dta slower as it requires running simulations for different input vectors and coming to the accuracy provides worst case timing analysis ensuring the circuit meets all the timing constraints under all the conditions so this accuracy is very good compared to dta okay and usage primarily use it for timing closure and ensuring design meets the timing requirements this uh, dta use it for functional verification to check if the circuit behaves correctly under specific inputs okay so this dta will basically check whether the circuit is working perfectly under particular input vectors okay so is it clear the difference between the ht and dta is it clear now let's see why do we need hta why do we need static timing analysis so first point is we need hta for verification of timing requirements so basically hta helps to ensure that all the timing constraints such as setup time hold times are met so this is crucial for ensuring the reliable operation of the circuits so we will discuss this terminology what is setup time and what is hold times in our upcoming session so for now remember this so why hta is needed so hta helps to ensure that all timing constraints such as such as setup time and hold times are met and optimization of performance so by analyzing the timing parts engineers can identify and optimize critical parts so this is also a very important point in hta we will discuss what is this critical parts so this basically optimizing the critical part enhances the overall performance of the circuit and design closure so hta is essential for achieving design closure ensuring that all the design meets all the timing requirements before moving on to the fabrication so after performing hta only we will check whether all the timing requirements are met or not so if the timing requirements are met then we can go to the fabrication of the chip so before fabrication of the chip we will basically perform this hta so without performing hta if we fabricate the chip and if we uh, test the chip then if the timing uh, is not met we cannot uh, again uh, rebuild the chip right so it is not possible it it is very cost effective and a wastage of time so that's why we will first perform the st we will uh, make the timing closure whether we we are uh, uh, whether the design is meeting all the timing constraints or not after checking everything we are going to fabricate the particular chip okay now uh, so what do we learn in this course so basically we will start with the introduction to hta we will learn uh, the basic concepts of clock data part setup time and hold time and uh, we will see why hta is crucial in the vrs flow and next we will see the timing parts and constraints clock domains clock queue jitter and still there are uh, some more terminologies in this hta setup time hold time and timing constraints and we will see the delay calculations uh, shortest path longest paths like that and timing analysis techniques also we are going to see single cycle and multi cycle paths false and multi mode paths timing expectations and how to handle them so these are all the agenda for this course we are going to see all this and we will uh, see uh, with some uh, we are we will take some particular uh, design example and we will see like a basic design example we will see we will see okay so this is the agenda of this course and uh, yeah so that's all for today's session so if you are having any particular doubt or query you can stay and ask me or else we can end the session thank you